Hello, 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 and happy Thursday. It is February 1st, the first Thursday of the month. A new month at that, but before I get all excited and dive in and forget to do what I normally do, welcome, welcome, welcome to Joanne's Healing Within. I am your host, Joanne Angel Barry Colon, your holistic integrative teacher, Reiki master teacher, card creator, card reader, licensed and certified holistic personal trainer, medical astrologer, and I can sit here all day and tell you the entire list, but I think we want to do other things instead. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and I'm hoping that you're buzzing, because I know I am buzzing anytime, energetically, whether it's a zodiac sign that changes, or the month changes, whatever it is, it gets me buzzing. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and share, like, and comment on today's show. So share the show out because this is some information that you're definitely going to want to um, save. And you're also going to want to share it out to your friends because, like I said, this is information today that you're going to want to know. So if for whatever the reasons are you've min missed any episodes, and I don't even have it in my notes when the last episode was, obviously the, la the last, uh, the third Thursday, uh, the third Thursday in January when I had Kitty here with me and our topic, uh, oh, it was the topic of the age of Aquarius. So there is a flyer with her information on there that if you want to reach out to her and chat with her about the age of Aquarius and of course go back and watch the show. So if you have any questions, <clears throat> feel free to reach out to her and ask about it. And you can rewatch the shows on many platforms, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV. And those of you who do like to entertain yourself by listening to the show, go ahead and listen to Spotify, Audible, and iHeartRadio. That's just a few of them. I can sit here all day and give you the list. So I do want to give a shout out and say hello to all of my viewers who are here, such as Anne. Give me one second. I'm about to have a cough attack. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, there you go. We're going to minimize those as much as we can. Yes, yes. Okay. So I'm so excited to be here with you today. And as I mentioned, it is February. Can you believe we've gone 31 days of the of the new year already? Oh, my God. What have you done in the last 31 days? <coughs> and remember, it's really important to recognize all the little small um action steps that you have done in the last 31 days so you can tap yourself on the back, take yourself out to dinner, buy yourself some flowers, whatever it is that you do to recognize your success because it's really important to recognize your success on whatever it is you are doing now that we are in February. So I do want to tap in a little bit about the energy of February. If you caught one of my reels today, I think I did one, don't even remember, it's been a busy day. <coughs> I spoke about the energy of February. Every month has a specific vibration. The month itself carries a specific vibration. Being that February is the second month, it carries a true vibration. Now, in addition to it carrying a true vibration because it's the second month, and this information I don't have in front of me, but if you are interested in knowing it, I would be more than happy to sharing with you the information. All you'd have to do is email me for that and what i'm about to say is every month based on its letters carries a specific vibration as well when you add up the letters to each month's name so if you are interested in knowing what february's actual vibration is based on its letters go ahead and email healingwithin76 at gmail.com and i'll be more than happy to letting you know that in fact maybe at some point today i'll do a line about it who knows Anyway, so when we take that number two from February, the second month of the year, that two holds the energy of your relationships. Relationships with self, others, <clears throat> and of course money. We always want to include ourselves in it because we, are, we have a relationship with ourselves and that's really, really important to pay attention to. So in addition to the two energy from February, Let's take the collective universal energy, and the collective universal energy is the year, which is 2024. When you think about that number and you add those four numbers up, you're going to get an eight energy. That eight in numerology means partnerships, I'm sorry, means abundance, um, achievement, success, harmony, <clears throat> and balance. So remember what I said about those small action steps that you took 
over the last 31 days and recognizing all that you've accomplished. That's that eight energy, and it's so important for this year for you to do that more than it has been in past years because of that eight energy. Now, in addition to the eight and the two, what we now need to do is we need to find the vibration, the frequency of this month. It had those two numbers together, so eight and two is ten. Now, in theory, in numerology, we always take the numbers down to a single digit. But before we do that, I like to talk about that 10 energy because it is a real big vibration. When we talk about astrology, it's the 10th house. 10th house is associated with Capricorn, and it is associated with your achievements, your success, the work you are here to do. And let's back it up to that 2 energy again. The work that you are here to do with every person you come in contact with. So whether you are standing at the grocery store and the person in front of you or behind you is having a conversation maybe with you or indirectly with somebody else and you happen to hear that conversation, there may be a message there that that person may have for you indirectly. So that's a, a very small, uh, like what we call a catalyst where they deliver a message indirectly. And you have a contract with that person the same way you have contracts with your family members, your co-workers, your friend, the, the mailman, whatever it is. And that is your soul's work. So this month, particularly for the month of February, is very powerful based on all the connections you will be making and have already in regards to what it is you were supposed to be doing for this month. So we're going to take that 10 and we're going to reduce it down to that single digit, which is 1. So the month of February carries a vibration and message of everything is new for the month of February. New beginnings, new opportunities, new ways of doing things, new ways of talking to yourself, new ways of talking to others, new ways of listening, new ways of dressing, new ways of connecting with your body. And I can sit here and go on and go on and go on, but you get the point. So that's the energy of February. So enjoy that. And... One last note before I go ahead and pull the cards. Tomorrow happens to be Groundhog's Day, which means theoretically speaking, if the little guy, I think, sees his shadow, it's supposed to be we have a longer winter. If he doesn't see his shadow, we have a shorter winter. Maybe it got the other way around. But a big message too is how about you get outside into the earth and go see if you can see your shadow and do the shadow work if in case you do see your shadow because the shadow work is all the things that we carry with us that helps us to where we can actually unload what we no longer need so remember this relationship that you have with yourself do some work with this so you can start releasing what you no longer need in this energy with that all being said let me pull a card for you to help you out in reference to working with a chakra getting a word to help you navigate and yes i will be talking about my partners in a minute thank you so much so much for bringing that up because I almost forgot. <laughs> Let me pull the card first and then I'm going to speak on my partners, which I almost forgot about. Oh my God. What a perfect card. Patience. Patience. Now, I actually heard something the other day about this word, patience. When we think about patience, it's very important to be patient. Otherwise, if you are not patient with yourself or somebody else, you may very well become the patient. That green energy is the matters of the heart. So really dig into your heart to think about the relationships you are in. That four energy is about home. I speak of home regarding your work, your shelter, and your body. And your body today is going to be a big topic. So hold on to that and let me dive into our partners, which I almost forgot about. Oh, my God, how did I do that? So diving into our partners, which I'm really super excited about. Uh, they constantly support me on this journey. We have Joe Monkman. He's our personal developer trainer. Then we have Kitty Budaway Foss, which is our storyteller of astrology, reader of the stars. And then we also have Tammy Moses. She's the podcast host and the founder of The Hoarding Solution. And, of course, you have me right there as well. Thank you, Bobby, for reminding me. I totally forgot about that. And if you only knew about that flyer, it's really interesting that I almost forgot about it. So anyway, card again is about the heart center. That four energy is about home, focusing on your work that you're here to do, your body, and your relationships, family and friends as well. We'll take a quick commercial break, 
and I will be right back and to share some more about today's show. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. If you are tuning in, whether you're watching or listening, I welcome you to Joanne's Healing Within. And I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Clone. If you are just tuning in right now and you missed the very beginning of the show, no worries. You can always go back and watch on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV. You can listen on Spotify, Audible, and iHeartRadio. I always like to bring back the card because I always find the cards really important, especially for today's topic. After all, today's topic is all about the cosmic directory to your health insurance. So our card here is about being patient. Be patient with whatever it is you need to be patient about. Otherwise, in the long run, you may become patient. The green is about the um, matters of the heart. So whatever is going on in your heart, if you have a issue going on with a family member or somebody else, or maybe you have an issue going on at work, it really is very important to tap into it and release it. That four energy is about bringing things back to balance, and also it's about your home, your career, meaning your soul's work, your shelter, family and friends, and of course your body. So that's the message for today. So I'm so excited to dive into this conversation with you for today. I encourage you to grab a pen and paper. However, you may want to watch first or listen first and then come back later and, and re-listen and watch and take notes at that point. Because today is a big day in regards to the Cosmic Directory to Health Insurance. So many of us are so focused on our health insurance that we don't realize that we have our health insurance literally right at the tip of our hands and based on the cosmic energies. Now, I'm going to show, there's going to be a, a, um, an astrology chart that's going to pop up right on the screen in just a second, somewhere along the line. I want you to pay attention to this astrology chart. It's not going to be there very long. It's not the greatest picture. But you can see all the information, and you can also see in some of the placements that there's nothing going on there, meaning there's no planet sitting in those houses. That doesn't mean there's nothing going on there. It just means there's no specific planets at that time. And that's okay. I need you to get familiar with your actual natal chart. And you can get a natal chart for free. There's so many different sites. I myself like um, the site astro.com. But whatever site you're comfortable with, feel free to uh, get yourself a chart so you can get to know yourself and get to understand how every zodiac sign, every planet, and every house literally is the, 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 the key to helping you to ensure that you have a health, you become a healthy version of yourself. And considering the energy that we're in for this year of 2024, that eight energy, this is really about learning to bring balance back into your body from within. This is not an, an external process. This is really about going within and working on who you are from a soul level. And that's what I do when I work with clients. I help them to un better understand who they are from a soul level, as opposed to what's going on externally. Anytime a client comes in and we talk about whatever is going on for them, I always ask them to let's, let's take a, a, a little deeper into the situation and see where it stems from. So what I like to do to start off with is I'm just going to explain to you the, the, um, 
zodiac signs and based on their elements so you can get a better understand what your element is and what i mean by your element meaning that each zodiac sign carries a specific element such as fire earth air water and that itself plays a big role in regards to who you are and how to navigate through your energy. So for example, fire energy is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So any place on your chart, and it could be your major three planets, major three planets would be your sun, moon, and ascending or rising sign. Those three planets are your fire energy, which, which means that's about action. That's about wanting to do things, constantly on the move, constantly in that space of gotta, 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 gotta go. Most Fire signs, when they're sitting still, they're never sitting still. They, one part of their body is always in motion because of all that energy within them. Earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorns. They theoretically are more grounded, more centered, more down to earth, so to speak. And they often spend a lot of time outside as well, but they're very still. They're very uh, quiet, shall we say. Understand that you might be sitting back and saying, no, I know some that's not as quiet. Remember, that's just a part of their makeup. They have a whole entire chart that defines who they are and also defines on how they respond and act to things. Then we have air. Air is intellectual. Air is, is, is um, their brain is always on. That's, the, that's what I'm actually hearing. And the air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And like I said, their brain is always on. So they're always into something, always thinking about something, and possibly overthinking at times. And I can raise my hand to that because I happen to be an Aquarius, moon sign, and Gemini sign. Then we have water. Water is emotional. They're very sensitive. They're nurturing. And they do take on other people's emotions because they are so sensitive. They are Cancers, Scorpios, and Pisces. And I can raise my hand to that because I'm a double water in reference to that sense. I have Cancer as my rising, Pisces as my sun energy. And if you only took a look at my chart, a deeper look, I actually have five planets that sit in water. So that makes me an emotional creature. That makes me very nurturing, very sensitive, and yes, taking on other people's energies. So it's very important for me to make sure so I take care of my health that I balance my time out by either being alone or quieting myself down. So this way here, I do not get burdened by all this water that I do have in my chart. So now, hopefully, you have a better understanding of the elements that you have based on your major elements, your major planets, which again are your sun, moon, and ascending sign. Those are your three major planets that we speak of. So that's your makeup. And then, of course, you go and you look at your other zodiac signs and see how many of those you have on your chart. So, for example, for me, I have, like I said, I have five planets that are in water. I have, I think it's five planets that are in, um, I think it's, is it fire? I think it's fire. Um, I have three planets that are in, in um, air. And then I have, I think, two planets that sit in Earth. And it's really interesting on the two planets that are in Earth because one planet sits in um, Taurus and another one sits in uh, Virgo. And my Capricorn house is empty. Not really empty, though. And considering what I do for work, it's very physical and earthy because it connects me into my body. Why is this important? It's very important because when you can start to understand your actual makeup, your astrological makeup, what you're made of, it can, again, it's the key to, to helping you ensure that you have a healthy body. How can you have a healthy body? What do you need to do to have a healthy body? What may work for me may not work for somebody else just based on their entire astrological makeup. They may not enjoy doing something that I enjoy doing because their astrological makeup just doesn't really need that per se. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to go and talk with you about 
the 12 zodiac signs, and I'm obviously not going to talk about all 12 of them in this one segment. It's going to be broken down. You know, each segment, I'm going to try to speak about four zodiac signs for each segment. And by the time we are done, prior to before the show's over, you will know about all the 12 zodiac signs. You will know about the planets, and you will know about houses. And how all of this really is a directory to helping you take care of your health and ensure that you are a healthy version of yourself. So I'm going to dive right in, and, and when we think about it, at this point in time, we're going to start off with Aries, because it's actually the first zodiac sign. As you already know, Aries is a fire sign. Its ruling planet is, is Mars, which again, Mars is about taking action. Taking action, doing something so you can become a better version of yourself. It's associated with the first house. First house is about newness. First house is about leadership, independence taking charge so again taking a look at your chart to see where you have any of those three in your chart and that will give you some ideas to how to go about initially starting something new when it comes to nutrition exercise meditation um rest anything under the the the, the realm of wellness when you think about it so that's about yourself. It's a very important role for that matter. Then we have Taurus. Taurus, again, as we already know, is an earth sign. So when we think about Taurus as an earth sign, it's about getting grounded. It, <coughs> its ruling planet is Venus. Venus is about love, relationships, beauty, value, and of course money. So we, we're gonna we're gonna put aside the the money aspects. And we're definitely going to talk about the relationships, the love, and the beauty in regards to you taking care of yourself and valuing yourself enough to want to make sure you are in the healthiest version of yourself and whatever that looks like for you. It is associated with the second house, which again is your relationships. Now think about the month of February. This is a big month for you guys because you carry that vibration of what February is. So this is your time to really focus in on how can you connect more with your body? How can you embody your body more so you can be a healthy version of yourself? What things can you remove from your schedule so you can have more time to take care of you? Good amount of sleep, making sure you're, you're preparing your meals, getting your hydration down pack, getting the protein that you need, making sure you're strength training. All of this is a priority for you. So this way here, you can embody your body more and really allow yourself to be more grounded and focused because when you are in your body, it helps you bring more balance into your body as well. Then we have Gemini. Gemini is, as we already know, it's an air sign. It's intellectual. Gemini is about communication. Gemini is about technology. It's about learning. It's about teaching. It's about listening, self-expression. Wherever you have Gemini in your chart, it really is about how do you communicate with yourself? How do you, what kind of conversations do you have with yourself? Are you cheering yourself up? Are you complimenting yourself? Or are you, you, the word I'm hearing, which is really funny, nagging on yourself. The ruling planet is Mercury. Mercury is all about your schedule. It's about making time for you. Being on top of you and making sure that on your calendar, you have you on your calendar. Mercury is also about group events and media and socializing. So you may want to get out there and find different, pla different places, different activities to do that's going to get you to be more attuned with your own body where maybe you have that support team. We think about it as associated with the third house energy. So again, look at your third house. See what's in there. Third house again, all of this is connected. It's communication, it's self-expression, it's listening. Pay attention to your higher wisdom and your intuition. Dropping, as I like to say, drop out of the brain so much because you're constantly in that mode of thinking and intellect and drop down into your heart so you can bring that balance into your life 
in allowing yourself the time to take care of you. Moving your body in such a way, and again, like I said, this may not be an, a, an individual thing. This may be about getting out into your groups and doing those group events. Group challenges um, is what comes to mind as well to help you be more connected and have a team and a tribe that's going to support you on being the best version of you. We're going to go with one more sign, the water sign, as for cancer. Cancer is associated with your home. It's nurturing. It's about family. It's emotional. It's caring. Its ruling planet is the moon. So wherever the moon is, so today's moon happens to be in Libra, the moon rotates every two and a half days. So for cancers, that moon energy does play a big role on your emotions, on whether or not you really want to be home and just taking care of yourself or you want to get out there and socialize and nurture the world. It's associated with your fourth house, so it's very important, whatever you have in your fourth house energy, that you want to bring balance back into your energy field, back into your home, meaning your body. If your body is not balanced, where you're getting enough rest, getting your nutrients in, making sure you're moving your body, if you're not balanced, that's going to create health issues. So it's so important paying attention to these placements and applying this energy, this information into your element. So this way here, your astrological makeup can be fully balanced and you can begin to feel good about yourself because you can nourish others and nurture others. And if you're not nurturing yourself, you're going to throw yourself off balance and that may create a lot of chaos in your own body. So we have just the first four for now. We're going to take a breather. And what I'm going to do, there's a flyer with my information up on there. Feel free to scan the QR code should you wish to reach out to me for self-growth discovery session, questions, um, if you wish to get a reading, whatever have you. Those who are listening to this, my email is healingwithin76 at gmail.com. I'm going to take that quick commercial break, and I'll be right back. Hi everyone, Kitty Peter Wink Foss, the storytelling astrologer, reader of the stars, and I'd like to invite you to join me on Intuition of the Soul on Facebook, a free private Facebook group, where I post a daily energy reading all about how you can navigate your day. Also reach out at intuitionofthesoul11 at gmail.com if you want a personalized reading to find out about how your circuitry works. Namaste. Hey, this is Joe Monkman and I am a personal development trainer and that means that I help people step into their leadership roles, uh, take their place uh, as a visionary, really understand their own mastery in the world so that they can really find their place at the buffet of life. And if you want to know more, you can find me on my Facebook page at Joe Monkman and joemonkman at gmail.com. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne. If you are just tuning in, you're definitely going to want to come back later to watch from the very beginning. And you can watch it on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV. If you want to listen to it, you can watch on, listen to Spotify, iHeartRadio, or Audible. And that's just a few of the platforms. Anyway, today's topic, for those of you who are just tuning in, is about the Cosmic Directory to Health insurance why is this topic so important theoretically we all have health insurance in some form or another we all want to make sure we are insuring our bodies to be healthy healthy based on the physical the emotional the spiritual and the mental as well especially mental health care is extremely important and 
besides going about your health care and health insurance based on, as I like to refer, the 3D way, the logical way, like your doctor's appointments, making sure your, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your insulin levels are on point, and that is important. There's so many other ways we can go about our health care and health insurance, ensuring that our bodies are healthy. And a big part of that is through your astrological makeup. Now, perhaps this is the first time you're hearing that term, your astrological makeup. In theory, we have all 12 zodiac signs in our astrology chart. Now, there is a chart that I'd like you to take a peek at that's going to show up in just a second. Again, I'm going to repeat myself from what I said earlier. When you look at your chart, as you can see, on my right hand of the chart, based on how, it's, how we're looking at it, is fully loaded. Lots going on there. On the left side of the chart, there's really nothing going on in the houses. However, even though there's nothing going on in the houses, there's a whole lot going on in the houses. So now I'm going to explain some more. In regards, I left off at Cancer, the astrological sign. So now I'm going to move down to Leo. So Leo is a fire sign. So that means action, that means movement, that means Leos do not like to sit still very much. They like to be on the go. Leo is associated with change, freedom, being courageous enough so they can make the changes, their, their charisma, their creativity, and they really like to have fun and adventure. And they're, they're really good with unpredictability. They're very spontaneous. They are associated, Leo is associated with the sun's energy. And very similar to, as I said about Cancer with the moon's energy, every time the zodiac sign changes from one sign, the, the sun changes from one sign to the other, that impacts all of us. So, for example, because the month has changed, the astrolo astrological sign didn't. So there's not a big change there when the astrological sign changes out of a, uh, Aquarius and moves into Pisces, that's going to be a different energy altogether. Leo is associated with the fifth house. So I want you to look at your chart and see where you have Leo, the sun, your sun energy, whatever that is for you, and whatever's in your fifth house. This is where you want to implement in this month and going forward what changes will you need to do, will you need to make, so you can really adapt a healthier version of yourself, being a stronger version of yourself, whether it's through physical movement or maybe not being in your head so much with worry, anxiety, and anxiousness and allowing yourself to move more into the calm and peace and even joy, which drops down into the heart center for that matter. So again, this is how you're ensuring yourself to have a healthy version and a healthy body. What changes will you need to make? And in your chart, whatever is in that in, in associated with Leo and Sun and the fifth house will help you navigate through a better version of who you are. So for example, on my chart with Leo, which is in my uh, second house, I have, again, now if you saw my chart, you'll see that in Leo, there's nothing really there. But I have my Black Lilith and my White Selena. And those are two really powerful, powerful energies for me because it's about protecting myself. And it's also about my fortune as well. Now, just a little bit, and I'm going to move on to the next sign. When we think about the protection, protection may mean that my body may take on a little bit of extra weight because there may be something that I might need, that I may be experiencing in February that I may need more grounding. And extra weight provides more grounding, keeps us more, keeps us more connected to the earth, considering Leo is a fire sign. My sun energy is Pisces. So it is about my emotions and how I do connect with others on a more spiritual level, level and empathic level as well. And then the fifth house, trying to remember what's in my fifth house right now. Um, fifth house, I think, I have my chart right here. You would think I would just look at it. My fifth house, my fifth house is associated with uh, Scorpio and Sagittarius. So I have two signs there. Both really important signs because one's water and again one's fire. So there's a lot going on there. When you can learn to navigate your chart, you can understand better on how to improve your health. How do you utilize this energy that we are in? And remember that when we speak of Leo's energy, the, the sun right now, 
is in Aquarius, which is the opposition of Leo. So the sun's energy is going to help you in regards to what can you do to be the best version of you and what changes are you willing to make so you can put yourself on your schedule so you can find time to eat properly, meaning sit down and eat, get your rest, meditate, exercise, all of those things are your guaranteed ways of being a healthy version of you. Let's move on to Virgo. Virgo is an earth sign. Virgo is about organization. It's about um, your schedule. It's the perfectionist. It's the perfectionist. So it's about being perfect. And theoretically, it could really be about being perfect in your own body, seeing, you, seeing yourself and, and embodying that vision of seeing yourself as the best version of you. It is ruled by Mercury's energy, which you heard me say earlier with, with Gemini. Mercury rules Virgo as well. So it is about how do you communicate with your body and how do you find time to schedule yourself on your calendar? It's associated with the sixth house. So it is about your body system. So if you happen to have your Virgo in sun, moon, or rising, that's about your body system. It is so important for you to make sure you are in your body, moving your body daily, chatting with your body, having a conversation with your body in reference to what is it your body needs, and becoming really aware of what your body actually speaks to you, how your body speaks to you. Does it speak to you just through different types of food that you need, or does it speak to you in reference to maybe you want to get outside and play? Pay attention to how your body speaks to you so you can get your body in that healthy version of yourself so you can feel good about yourself as well. Schedule, schedule, schedule for you Virgos. Then we have Libra. Libra is an air sign. Libra is about balance. Balancing, harmony, um, peace, all within the body. When Libras are not balanced, when Libras are not at a state of peace, their bodies get disrupted. Their bodies actually carry a lot of stress when they are not balanced. So it's so important for Libras to pay attention to what their body is saying. Libras are ruled by Venus. Again, when we talk Venus, we spoke about that one with Taurus energy. It's about the love. How do you love on you? How do you take care of you? Self-care is extremely important. And self-care is not just about getting to bed early. Self-care is really about how you talk to yourself, how you nourish yourself, how you take time out, and how you move your body. It's about the seventh house energy. So again, looking at your natal chart, where do you see that on your chart? What's associated with it? You may very well have Libra as your sun, moon, or rising. When we think about the Libra energy right now, for those who may have sun, moon, or rising as a Libra sign, remember the south node. The south node is in Libra right now. So that could, be, that could very much be activating all the old versions of yourself that no longer really serve you and it's time to let it go so you can bring more balance into play into play so pay attention to that then we also have scorpio scorpio water sign scorpio is about the endings the new beginnings and the transformation scorpios are ruled by pluto now pluto is a big player right now i'm sure you've all heard of pluto we are Known right now as the age of Aquarius based on Pluto's energy. There is so much energy going on with Pluto in reference to transforming your body. So those of you who have Scorpio in your chart, in your major elements, you know, sun, moon, or, or rising sign, this is about your transformation. What are you letting go of? What are you bringing in? How are you wanting to move your body differently so you can transform and be the best version of yourself? It's associated with your eighth house energy. So again, we're going to look at those three sections on your chart and pay attention to what shows up there because this could be the very thing that's going to be the thing that gets you to do something different. This could be the very thing that says, okay, I'm going to destroy those habits that I had that's preventing me from taking care of myself and really allowing yourself to be better at self-care so you can transform and heal your body from inside out. Then we're going to move into 
before we take a, another break, we're going to move into Sagittarius. When we think about Sagittarius again, fire sign, so very active. I got to go, 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 go. Sagittarius do like to travel, and it doesn't mean about packing a bag and getting on a plane. It could just be traveling to a different city, traveling in your neighborhood, connecting with people. They are true tellers and paying attention to your dreams. So rest time is also very important as well. Sagittarius are ruled by Jupiter's energy. Now I want to talk a little bit about Jupiter's energy here because this is a big one. Jupiter is a planet of expansions. It's a it's a it's a planet known for your spiritual gifts and and um your spiritual growth as well. And when we speak of expansion, whatever zodiac sign Jupiter is in, so right now Jupiter is in Taurus energy. Jupiter actually carries the energy of expansion. So Jupiter is known very common for waking. So those of you who may have Jupiter in Taurus right now, you may notice that you probably are carrying a little extra weight. And there's a very good explanation for it because, again, Jupiter is about expansion. It's not permanent weight. It will, the weight will release itself once Jupiter comes out of Taurus energy, which is not that far off. Um, I don't have the exact date in regards to when. I believe it's actually um, May something. Let me see if I can find it very quickly so I can give you that information because I always like you to be in the know. Usually like to have my information right in front of me, but I do not have that information at this time. Again, another reason why you would want your email. Let me see if I can find it one more last time. No, can't find it. Not going to hustle do this. But anyway, so going back to our Sagittarius and Jupiter energy, also associated with ninth house. So we think about ninth house energy, it is about letting things go. It is about decluttering, um, releasing. So again, if you have Sagittarius, Jupiter, ninth house, take a look at where that is. How, what can you do, <coughs> excuse me, what can you do to release, let go of your bad habits? <coughs> and I don't think I really want to use the word bad habits because bad is judgment. So rather than using bad habits, what can you do to release whatever no longer serves the energy you're in right now? So if you are looking to be the best version of yourself, you are looking to have better health care and ensure that you are in a healthy version of you, what can you do to let go of the beliefs, habits, and programmings that you may be carrying all this time and work on letting it go so you can see yourself as the best version of you? So that's Sagittarius energy. Loving that. We're going to go one more and then we're going to take a break. We're going to go to Capricorn. <coughs> now, when we talk about Capricorn, and I'm just going to come up to Pluto for a second. Pluto has spent the last 16 years in Capricorn energy. So for you Capricorns out there, sun, moon, and ascending signs, there was a very, very, very intensive energy for you with Pluto being in your sign for that long. And very good reason for it, because again, it allowed you to, it allowed Pluto to help you let go of what you did no longer need it. When we talk about Capricorn energy, Capricorn is your work. <coughs> Capricorn is the work that you came here to do, your success, your fame, your accomplishments, your awards, your recognition. That's Capricorn energy. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. I want to talk a little bit about Saturn. <coughs> Saturn is about your structure, your foundation. It's about boundaries. It's about your karmic reset. And it is about um, your karmic cycle, for that matter. Those of you who do have Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising, pay attention because right now Saturn is in Pisces energy. Pisces, again, is sensitive. It's empathic. It's, it's intuitiveness. It's going with the flow. So with that Saturn energy, it's helping you to move more into flow. So how can you bring your body more into flow, releasing all the resistance that you may be holding on to, whether it's stress, anxiousness, worry, thinking about things that are not even yours. 
using that Saturn energy to start rebuilding some boundaries, resetting your energy field, so you can assure that you are in a healthy body. The Capricorn energy is associated with your 10th house. So you also want to look at your 10th house energy. What's floating in there? And remember, we spoke about that 10 with the energy of February. So for you Capricorns, this is a really powerful month for you because of that 10. What new ways can you implement new boundaries? Resetting your karmic cycle. What new ways are you going to connect with your structure, your body? Could this be the month where you actually do start to move your body more? Maybe you strength train. Maybe you decide that, you know what? I'm going to learn how to balance my nutrition. I'm going to stop restricting myself from certain foods. and I'm going to allow myself to have what my body really desires and craves. When we think about our astrological makeup, our food plays a big role in our astrological makeup. And that will be for another show, I promise you. So with that being said, we have two zodiac signs left. I'm going to save those for the next segment. Again, there is a um, flyer, thank you, with my QR code. So if you are interested in scheduling a discovery session, readings, or you have questions, Scan that code. If you are listening, you can email healingwithin76 at gmail.com. I'm going to take that quick commercial break. I'm going to read some of the comments, and I'm going to be right back. Hey, this is Joe Monkman, and I am a personal development trainer. And that means that I help people step into their leadership roles, uh, take their place uh, as a visionary, really understand their own mastery in the world so that they can really find their place at the buffet of life. And if you want to know more, you can find me on my Facebook page at Joe Monkman and joemonkman at gmail.com. the storytelling astrologer, reader of the stars, and I'd like to invite you to join me on Intuition of the Soul on Facebook, a free private Facebook group, where I post a daily energy reading all about how you can navigate your day. Also reach out at intuitionofthesoul11 at gmail.com if you want a personalized reading to find out about how your circuitry works. Namaste. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Joy and Silly Within. If you are just tuning in, I am your host, Joy and Angel Barry Cologne. If you are just tuning in, you're definitely going to want to come back and watch from the very beginning, as this is an interesting topic, at least I think so, the Cosmic Directory to your health insurance. You can come back later and watch on right here, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, also Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV. If you want to listen, you can go and listen on Spotify, Audible, and iHeartRadio. So I was reading the comments, and I'm loving one of the comments that's showing up, and I do want to read it out loud. The comment is that Anne has learned a lot about the foods that she's eating, and she's learned it from me. Yes, your foods do play a role in regards to your astrological makeup. Not every one of us, depending on, again, our astrological makeup, are supposed to be eating the same way. And I'm going to bring this up, and then I'm going to dive into the other two astrological signs. This brings up to a really great topic in regards to those who may be vegetarians, vegans, um, go on low-carb diets, uh, do not eat enough fat, whatever it is, meatless diets for that matter. Our body, astrologically, the astrological makeup, needs certain nutrients. 
especially when we are going through a frequency upgrade, meaning when there's a lot of planets sitting in one zodiac sign, and there is, and you have that particular planet, that particular zodiac sign, you may need certain foods that you may not normally eat on a regular basis. And it's your body literally telling you, you need these foods. The same way where you may not need certain foods at a certain time, and your body will tell you that as well. Now, again, when we speak about the science or the logical ways of looking at things in regards to certain foods create inflammation in our bodies, for those of us who experience arthritis, there are a list of foods that do create arthritis, that do create inflammation in the body. However, there's certain ways to go about that to eliminate the inflammation. Now, there's not enough time to share that with you. If you are experiencing or do experience inflammation flare-ups based on certain foods you do eat, please reach out to me. And I would love to have a conversation with you to get to know more about your astrological makeup. And then I can give you some tips to, to take in. So this right here, whatever food you are consuming that may be creating inflammation, and you enjoy those foods, that you might still be able to eat them with some moderations. But yes, and there are plenty of foods out there, depending on your, your astrological makeup, may be causing inflammation in your body. And a lot of that basically is due to the lack of exercise. When you exercise, strength training, moving your body, whatever food you're consuming, your body is going to utilize that nutrients and burn it. And this way here, whatever is going on with your body, if you do have arthritis, the more you move your body, the less your arthritis will flare up. And again, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. You can email healingwithin76 at gmail.com should you have questions about your dietary habits. And I can guide you in reference to your astrological makeup to what foods are for you. With that being said, let me go into the last two zodiac signs before I get caught up and run over time. We are now at Aquarius. Now, as I said earlier, sometimes we have a lot of planets in one zodiac sign, which is what we do right now. We literally have a lot of planets sitting between Capricorn and also Aquarius. And as of February 16th through February 20th, and I think that's what, four days, we're going to have five planets in Aquarian energy. So for any of you that are, have your sun, moon, or ascending in Aquarius, or you have anything sitting in your 11th house, or you have anything associated with Uranus, know that those energies are going to be activated because of those five planets that are in Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is all about community. It's about your vision. So it really is the age of Aquarius. And it is about how you visualize yourself being the best version of who you are. Getting out to your community, finding your tribe that's going to support you on your journey. Finding that one person that's going to be real to you in regards to when you are off track and you're sort of allowing yourself to sort of fall out of health. So find that one person that's going to be right on top of you. It is associated with your 11th house. So like I said, your Uranus energy is about the awakening. It is about breaking the rules. So what I'm here doing is I'm breaking the rules in regards to not the normal, what we know as health insurance, to really getting to understand that your astrological makeup is really your health insurance to help you ensure yourself to being in the best version and the healthiest version of your body that you could ever be in. Last but not least, our Pisces energy, which is a water sign, emotional. And when we speak of water, especially for, for Pisces energy or any water sign, our bodies are made of about 80% of water, which means we need water in our bodies. We need to hydrate. If there's one thing you walk away from today in reference to helping you have the healthiest version and healthiest body, hydration. Drinking water. You cannot go wrong by drinking water. Your body requires water. When we think of Pisces energy, Neptune and Jupiter are associated with Pisces, and it's just 12th house energy. 
Pisces carries the energy of all zodiac signs. It carries every zodiac sign in its energy field. So wherever you have Pisces in your chart, sun, moon, ascending, wherever you have, whatever's in your 12th house and whatever's associated with your Neptune and Jupiter energy, pay attention because you have some really great information there to help you really work on letting go of the water you're carrying. And by drinking water, that will eliminate any bloat that you may be experiencing. And by drinking water, that also decreases the inflammation that you may be experiencing from whatever the food you think may be causing the inflammation in your body. And notice I said you think, because again, everything and anything that we believe is things that we have been programmed to believe, to believe it to be true. It's the belief, it's the habits, it's the programming that we have developed based on our health, fitness, and wellness. And because we believed this for so long, now it's really about unbelieving it and starting some new habits. So all that being said, really take a look at your natal chart, your astrology chart, and start paying attention to what your chart is made of, what your astrological makeup really is. It really is your directory to your health insurance. So all that being said, I'm going to take that last commercial break. There is a flyer with my information on there again. Feel free to tap on that QR code. If you are listening, you can email healingwithin76 at gmail.com. I'm going to take that quick commercial break, and I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. If you are just tuning in, I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne. You missed a great show. You can definitely come back and watch, re-watch on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV. You can listen on Spotify, Audible, or iHeartRadio. Anyway, it was a great show. And before we dive off, I just want to give you some insight, some of our some of my partners have some great promos for you. Starting with Kitty Foss. She's got the Words of Wisdom the third Monday every month. There is a flyer there that you can get that information. And moving on. up oh, that's Spirit Messages. So we have Joe Monkman with our Spirit Messages where he's going to start up the next six-week series every Tuesday night. Feel free to check out that flyer. And eventually, there's going to be a word of wisdom flyer popping in. Again, like I said, there you go. Intuition of the soul, the third Monday, every month at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's a fun, fun class because it will help you to change up your wording. Because even your wordings can actually impact your health as well. And then we also have Monday, Moon Day, six-week class. Featured by me, hosting it, February 12th. Learn about your moon energy because that definitely will help you get on track with everything regarding your astrological makeup. And then I think there's one other flyer there, which is called the Aquarius Portal. That's happening on February 4th, this Sunday. I will be speaking about the Aquarius Portal, all the energies that's going to be in Aquarius and how that is actually going to impact you. And, of course, there will be a 12-card spread for each zodiac sign, so you don't want to miss that. That you can catch on my um, personal page, Facebook, YouTube channel, and, of course, Twitter. It's been so much fun, and we're literally at the last minute. 
So I gotta go, guys. I see. I will see you all in two weeks from now, the third Thursday of the month. Enjoy February. Bye bye for now.